One of the things I like about your work is it seems like there's so much like reflection or thinking going on in the, po the people that you're, you're uh, doing the poses of. This person looks maybe more like something just happened to them. What, so why, why is that? Why is there so much emotion or reflection in your work? Um, how do I uh, word that? I find it's, um, I mean, the human animal is, is, I mean, we're driven by our emotions. And I'm, I'm reading this great book called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, which is a fabulous book. You know, it's a, you know millions of people have read it, but I just found it. And, um, but it kind of reflects what I'm, you know, it's like we're driven by our emotions. And I, I, you know, I think we live in a society where just because you can make it doesn't mean that you necessarily should. And so I see lots of sculpture around that doesn't really drive me emotionally. It's just like, yes, it's a child or it's, you know, but there's no soul there. And I, um, I, that's what I find intriguing is, is to be able to push the clay around and, and make someone feel. And it's not even, you know, I, I, like I have an intention in my head of where I'm driving with a specific sculpture. And lots of times they'll evolve to something else or they'll have multiple meanings um, as it goes on. It'll kind of develop and I'm like, ooh, and it kind of means this to me and it kind of means this. But, you know, and a lot of people who do figurative sculpture, um, you know, write all that out and tell you what that is. And, and I don't really want to. I don't want to drive it too much. Like I put a title there to try and steer the viewer to like a vague direction, but you can, you know, the title is usually, you know, ambiguous and you can pull from it what you want. Um, like this one is called Surrender, um, you know, and when you say that, it, I think it's kind of obvious. It's like, yeah, you know, and then, you know, but then it makes you think, what, you know, what is he surrendering to? You know, what does surrender mean to me? Um, that sort of thing, and I just, I think in a day and age of so many, like, um, you know, sculpture in, in 2007 is either, you know, abstraction, these huge kind of corporate art pieces that, <clears throat> you know, don't necessarily make you feel anything, um, or they're like Civil War Memorial or, you know, uh, some mayor, you know, that's kind of waving and vaguely looks alive. and. You know, nobody captures like, you know, I say nobody, that's insulting. There are great artists out there, but um, I think very few really make you feel something. And I guess that's, that's kind of my, that's what I'm interested in, is I want to evoke some emotion, evoke some insight, you know, some, some inward feeling and um, even, you know, self-analyzation and, and that sort of thing. I think there's a that's very important in life and in our fast-paced society. Um, nobody does it or, you know, not as much as they should. Well, you know, it was interesting to me when you said that you, uh, you're, you had read a book and then you wanted to bring some of the themes into your sculptures because people think, I think, of sculpture as being sort of visual and it being pretty to look at, but it not being, you know, ideas, like say a book has ideas, but yeah, they don't yeah. think of sculpture as conveying ideas. Yeah, that's <laughs> interesting in itself. And, and I think that's probably, you know, I, I, you know, maybe late 18th century France, you know, there were sculptors that were really trying to speak. And I mean, there's still sculptors that are, that are speaking um, in more modern terms, you know, and, and lots of people have a hard time relating to you know, I mean, sculpture has become very relative, you know, if you go into a modern art museum and, you know, it's like a, you know, a room full of dirt with a uh, G.I. Right. Joe figure in the middle and it's a statement on, you know, atomic energy or something. And, you know, there's, and, and, and that's valid speaking, but I think lots of times it's so over people's heads and it's hard to, for them to relate. Um, you know, so I, I just think, you know, and, and you know, I have artist friends who are like, figurative art is so last century and, and figurative art is dead. And, and there's definitely, it's, it's been kind of dwarfed and repressed and it hasn't been very popular as, as a speaking medium, um, basically because it was kind of overtaken by film and, and then the modern art movement and, and you know, um, even surrealism and Dada and everything kind of 
started dissecting it a little bit. But, you know, but I still think there's something to say, and I think there's something primal about familiar shapes and, and anatomy that people can really relate to and emote to. And this one's great. I, I yeah. think this is the best thing I've ever done because I think it's interesting from... It is. Yeah. It's very rare that um, sculpture works from every angle. Even most of my stuff, I usually have, you know, several angles. You know, right. like I have painters and we talk about sculpture and what is sculpture and it's essentially it's it's painting in three dimensions 360 degrees um, and, and this is probably the only composition that I've ever come up with that I'm really I can't find an angle I don't like and this one was well it was kind of a flash like uh, surrender as far as I had a, a vague idea that I wanted a man you know just embedded you know in himself and and you know hand on the face but um, and it was initially called Weary. Um, and then the more I kind of delved into it and I got the model in here and we started working through and um, like this is the initial, um, like I did a, a pencil drawing first, um, you know, on, on a napkin while I was driving to dinner or something and, and I have a file and I stuff those away. And, um, and then from that, I sketched out this small one, um, which is called a maquette, um, which is just thinking in three dimensions. You make your model in clay, and then what happens then? Uh, you make a, a silicone mold, um, which is like a silicone to capture all the detail, and then a hard shell on top of that. Um, and then I usually offer multiple casting mediums uh, at, at different price levels. Um, you know, if, if you want to do a bronze, then from that silicone, you cast a wax. And from that wax, you make a, a silica and plaster mold that can take the heat. Mm -hmm. um, you melt out the wax, replace it with a bronze, bust that out. You know, bronze is a really long process. Um, and then I also sell just plaster casts. We've been working with models. I can't afford to have a model here every day. Right. And, and to, you know, I mean, this is, you know, weeks of sculpture to get to this point. Um, so I usually have a model in for like a day in this specific model. I'm like, okay, I have this composition, that composition, and then, you know, I usually just tool around, try and find some new ones while they're here. Um, yeah, and we'll um, find the pose, kind of work on it a little bit, rough some things out, um, and then do pretty extensive video. Um, and then I work from the video because it's as close as, like when I started, I was uh, working from photographs, but then you're still, you know, if you photograph it from this angle and then this angle, which are, you know, not very far, you're still, there's a gap exactly. here right. that, you know, if you're trying to catch the contour of an elbow, you get lost. Um, so with a video, it's the closest thing you can do to having a live model. Right. Well, and because you had talked about the sculpture of shadows. So that's another thing you can, that, that envisioning of how the shadowing. Yeah. And I'll usually light my model the same way. So like if, you know, when I have a model, I have some big 500K bulbs that I suspend above them, you know, and they're usually pretty close to them, so I get some really harsh lines and shapes, you know, and then um, as I'm sculpting, I have, you know, I'm always working with these lights. I mean, you can see how much it changes just, you know, you know this muscle here, but when you come over here, it kind of fades out. And, um, so yeah, it's all about pushing the shadows and the highlights. Um, I think Rodin described it, the, the bumps in the valleys or something. And, but yeah, this one started out as weary and then evolved to, it's like, okay, what am I trying to say? If I'm trying to push people to think, you know, what, what do I want them to think about? And so it evolved from weary to um, the consequence of knowledge to comprehension. And I don't know where it is at this point. It may change again, but it's a comprehension right now.